everyone, it's Susanna here with Health Ed Solutions, and today's lesson is part one on aortic stenosis, included in our Heart Murmur series. Don't forget to visit us online at healthedsolutions.com for more free content. Now, let's get started. The aortic valve is located between the left ventricle and the aorta. A healthy valve has three flaps and opens smoothly and quietly to allow blood ejection during ventricular systole. When ventricular systole ends, pressure drops rapidly in the left ventricle and the semilunar valve closes with a dub sound. This is known as S2, the second heart sound. This valve closure prevents backflow of blood into the left ventricle. Here is that normal aortic valve with its three flaps and how nicely it opens. Stenotic valves don't open all the way. In fact, the word stenotic means narrowed. The most common cause of aortic stenosis in industrialized countries is calcification of the valve. Calcium from the bloodstream deposits upon the leaflets of the valve, causing it to gradually stiffen and narrow the opening. Hypertension and smoking are risk factors for this condition, which is similar to the risk factors for coronary artery disease. Diagnosis is usually in those over 65 years of age. In developing countries, aortic stenosis is most often the result of rheumatic heart disease which is generally believed to be caused by an autoimmune attack of the heart valves after an untreated streptococcus pyogenes infection. The attack of these valves by the person's own immune system causes the valves to develop fibrotic scarring, which stiffens the valve. An additional risk factor for the development of aortic stenosis is bicuspid aortic valve, or BAV. This congenital abnormality occurs when two of the three flaps fuse together during the first few weeks of embryological development. About one to 2% of all people are born with this condition. Most of the time, the valve works just fine. However, the shape puts the valve under different pressure forces, which may make this valve more susceptible to calcification. Seen here, and fibrosis, seen here. Hypertension or autoimmune reactions are both more likely to damage this type of valve. Aortic stenosis decreases cardiac output. Here's that normal aortic valve. It opens smoothly to allow an appropriate amount of blood to be ejected. A stenotic aortic valve ejects less blood for the same amount of force. The left ventricle compensates by getting larger. This is called hypertrophy. An echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart, can confirm left ventricular hypertrophy and aortic stenosis. It may even reveal the news that the patient was born with a bicuspid aortic valve. Signs and symptoms of aortic stenosis. These can best be remembered with the acronym SAD. S stands for syncope, another word for fainting. This is due to a decrease in cardiac output that results in decreased cerebral or brain perfusion. A is for angina or chest pain. This is caused by a decreased cardiac output that results in decreased myocardial or heart muscle perfusion. And D for dyspnea or shortness of breath. Dyspnea literally means bad breathing. 
This is due to a decreased cardiac output that results in decreased tissue perfusion. The patients will feel starved for oxygen. Note that these symptoms will not appear until the hypertrophy of the heart can no longer compensate for the narrowed valve and diminished cardiac output occurs. That's it for part one of our lesson today. Thanks for watching and don't forget to please like and subscribe below.